guys? It's your boy, Barca boy 103. Today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Lots of news to discuss. Firstly, Barcelona have officially submitted their second bid for Robert Lewandowski. It will be rejected, but they have submitted the second bid. Again, Barcelona are doing everything they can to sign Lewandowski this summer. And again, July the 12th will be a key day. That day, Lewandowski has to report back the training for Bayern Munich. The question now is, will he go on strike and make his move to Barcelona more feasible or go to training and rule out the move to Barcelona? Now, alongside Lewandowski, another priority in the attack for Barcelona this summer, is to sign Rafinha, but of course, the operation is damn near impossible with Leeds wanting a 75 million euro package. Barcelona looks set to make a new offer for Rafinha that most likely, again, will get rejected and in the end, Barcelona will walk away. And they're now looking at alternative options for both Rafinha and also in the case of Robert Lewandowski. And there have been some big names popping up. Angel Di Maria, Paulo Dybala, Luis Suarez, and Neymar as well. We'll talk about those. But of course, with players coming in, players will have to leave the cup this summer. We have some updates on Omtiti, Pjanic, other French players as well. And of course, the main update on Frankie de Jong. Manchester United have submitted a new bid for him, and the bid is absolutely shy. In the end, it will get rejected by Barcelona. And now Man United are planning to play the long game with Barcelona for, of course, Frankie de Jong. And finally, we have some contract renewal updates on Pablo Gave, Jody Cruyff, and also the big one on Usman Dembele and we also take a look at the new schedule for La Liga for the upcoming season and I will give you guys my analysis on it but before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get to 300 likes on this video be very much appreciated also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours now the first player that we have been linked with is of course the number one target and party signing for Barcelona this summer Robert Lewandowski. Huge developments over the past 24 hours and that is that Barcelona have officially submitted their second bid for the Polish striker and it broke in from build in Germany and they came out saying that Barcelona have made an improved offer of 35 million euros for Robert Lewandowski. Bayern Munich are unlikely to respond again to this offer as they consider it too little. The German club will not sell Lewandowski for anything less than 50 million euros. Of course, a previous offer made at Barcelona was 32 million euros fixed plus five in variables. When I first saw it, I'm thinking, we are low-balling beyond belief. They want 50 million euros and we offer 35. Well, that's not the case because reports coming in from the Polish media saying that Barcelona's second offer for Lewandowski is 35 million euros fixed, plus of course, again, the 5 million euros in variable. So all in, 40 million euro offer from Barcelona to Lewandowski. Most likely, again, it will be ignored and rejected by Bayern Munich. And also for Bitsi Romano, confirmed the second bid as well. He came out saying that Bayern Munich sources feel that Barcelona's offer for Lewandowski worth 35 million euros plus five in variables is still not enough. So again, they're gonna reject this bid. Of course, pretty obvious. I think for this deal to get over the line, I think Barcelona will have to offer 40 plus 10 in variables, maybe 45 plus 5. I can't see Barcelona making 50 offer. I think that'd be way too much, man. I already think we're already offering too much, in my opinion. But 40 plus 10, I would be okay with. 45 plus 5, I wouldn't be okay with. But in the end, it's probably gonna happen. So we'll wait and see. But again, Barcelona have made their official second offer for Lewandowski, and most likely it will be rejected. Now, Again, the sporting director of Bayern Munich, Hassan, whatever his last name is, is speaking again to the media. He was talking, I don't know why he was speaking, but he was speaking nonetheless. And he came out, of course, talking about Lewandowski again. And he was asked, what is the percent of Lewandowski staying at Barcelona at this moment? He said that right now, it's 100%. July the 12th is the first day at work, so I'm awaiting for him. But I'm not thinking about that now because we got other things to do at the moment. I think things have calmed down a bit recently, but we still have a long way to go. I think we had a very good conversation with him in Mallorca, of course. It's true that I was there. Oliver Khan was also there. We talked. We each side explained their positions. We didn't want to talk about the details, of course. It was a good conversation nonetheless. Yes, I'm convinced he's a professional and he has big goals in his career. That's why it's fixable. He is welcome in Munich on July the 12th and will be there for the first training session of the summer. At least, I'm expecting him to be. 
what were we hearing from Bayern Munich? From Oliver Kahn, Hassan, whoever it is, July 12th, July 12th, July 12th, July 12th. This deal is not getting done before then. I said it before and I'll say it again. I'll do any four for you guys want. Pluck it in the comments down below. This deal will not happen before then. On that day, Lewandowski has to go on strike and not show up for the first training session for Bayern Munich. If he shows up, deal is off. If he does not show up, deal is back on track. Now, from the Barcelona point of view, there are some reports. Firstly, Juan Martí and Mateo Morito came out saying that Barcelona expect that Bayern Munich to rethink about their position regarding Lewandowski, which they have it very firm on until now, after they made that second offer of 35 million euros plus 5 million euros in variables. Ben Aid came out saying that Barcelona promised Lewandowski's agent, Fini Zahavi, they will do everything possible to sign him. The club will continue to try until the last breath. So the club being in the end, Lewandowski will join Barcelona. They're making the necessary movements at the moment to make this a reality. And again, they will go all in to the maximum. Of course, I'm not going to offer 100 million euros for Lewandowski or maybe even 60. I think Barcelona will offer 40 plus 10, maybe 45 plus 5. And if that gets rejected, they will walk away. But again, they're probably his agents, Zahavi and Lewandowski. They will do everything possible. And with the second bid going in, which most likely, of course, will be rejected, they feel like Bayern Munich are starting to have some doubts, maybe rethink their position. All that sort of stuff. So in the second bid will get rejected, but it's part of the game plan for Barcelona. But again, I'll say it one more time. July the 12th is absolutely key. On that day, Lewandowski has to go on strike. If he does not, this deal will even become more complicated. And I highly doubt the deal will be done before July the 12th. Of course, Barcelona wanted to come before the US tour. Very, very unlikely. But in the end, Barcelona have submitted the second bid for Lewandowski of 35 million euros plus 5 million euros in variables. Now, along with Lewandowski, another priority in the attack for Barcelona this summer is, of course, to strengthen the right wing position and their dream name in that area is, of course, Rafinha. But at the moment, this operation is looking very, very, very complicated. First, coming in from Deportivo from Roger Teror, he's come out saying that although other clubs have shown concrete interest and want to move for Rafinha, Rafinha's priority is still Barcelona. He expects Barcelona to make an offer for him soon as he wants to resolve his future as soon as possible as well. Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that Leeds are tired of waiting for Barcelona to make a move for Rafinha. In fact, They've already discarded Barcelona as a potential shooter for the player as well. Although Arsenal the best place to sign him at the moment, Rafinha is only thinking about Barcelona. Now here's the best part as well. The reporters from Leeds, Phil Hay, and another one as well, forget his name, very, very reliable around Leeds. And they're saying Rafinha is either going to go to Barcelona or stay in Leeds. He does not want to risk his career, or not his career, sorry. does not want to risk his World Cup spot in November by going to another club like Arsenal, Chelsea, or Tottenham. Goes there, does not play for the first few months, and in the end, misses out on the World Cup. Then, of course, if he stays at Leeds, it'll be for Barcelona next summer if you want to go for him as well. If we get a quick replacement, like for example, Angel Di Maria, one year, next summer, Di Maria leaves, and then we go in for Rafinha again. But this summer, it's very, very complicated because Leeds want 75 million euros as a package. So 65 plus 10, 55 plus 15, they want 75 million euros, which of course, Barcelona will not be offering. He's not worth that. In the end, we'll have to wait and see. I think Barcelona will make an offer, maybe 40 plus 10, something like that. In the end, it'll get rejected and we'll walk away. But again, Rafinha could still come to Barcelona in the future, but this summer, it's looking near impossible. Now, with both the Lewandowski and Rafinha deals looking very complicated to complete for Barcelona at the moment, of course, Rafinha, way, way worse. Lewandowski, I would say 50-50 at the moment. Of course, Barcelona do have alternative options for their positions. Firstly, for Rafinha, the main option is, of course, Angel Di Maria. And there are early reports coming in from Italy saying that Juventus had decided to step away from the pursuit of Angel Di Maria, pushing him closer to Barcelona. Now, there were reports coming out a few days ago as well, saying that Barcelona's priority right now is to renew Dembele's contract and then have Di Maria sign on a one-year contract and have them to compete on the right wing for next season instead of going for Rafinha, very expensive, and Dembele's renewal is also very expensive. To be honest, I'm happy with that. Again, still early reports from Italy, all the concrete sources are still saying look it's still possible but Juventus keep pushing for an answer every single day from Di Maria and he keeps on stalling it so we'll wait and see how Di Maria
Korea, but again, still a fairly decent chance he will join Barcelona this summer, but again, there will be a competition for his signing. Now, let's get into some weird ones. Firstly, the return of Luis Suarez El Pistolero. Alfredo Martinez came out saying that Barcelona probed the possibility of Suarez's return once they knew he was leaving Atletico Madrid, but told him he will have to wait until August as the priority is Lewandowski. However, Suarez has offered some other clubs and doesn't consider waiting. So apparently, once Suarez announced that he was leaving Atletico Madrid, Barcelona called him saying, look, we want you back, but only if we don't sign Lewandowski. If you can wait till August, we'll have a good chance of signing you, but if you don't want to wait, that's okay. And Suarez said, I'm not really going to wait. So imagine that, the return of El Pizzolero. To be honest, for one season, I wouldn't mind it. It should give me not a proper send-off. I think the way he left was absolutely disgusting. And if, if we do sign Suarez, then Aubameyang will be starting most of the season as, you know, in the big games, the uh, Champions League, and then Suarez will kind of be the backup. But if we sign Lewandowski, Lewandowski will be the starter and Aubameyang will be the backup. So a big drop in level in my opinion. But overall, wait and see. I highly doubt Suarez will return. I think most likely he'll play one more year in Europe like Di Maria and then go back and retire in Uruguay. But at the moment, Suarez's future is still very unclear alongside, of course, Robert Lewandowski. Now... On the theme of Barcelona forwards, you know, we all had that great trio, those great times of MSN. Neymar has been offered to Barcelona and it's coming in from El Tringuito TV. Now, of course, El Tringuito are not too reliable, but they reported for Barcelona, Jose Alvarez, I would say he's in mid-tier. He's got a lot of stuff right over the past year and a half, some stuff that I didn't think he would get right. I believe he was one of the first journalists to say that we were going to be going in for Lewandowski. So take this with a pinch of salt, of course, but I want to get you guys' opinion on this. He came out saying that Neymar has been offered to Barcelona for a fee of 50 million euros from Paris Saint-Germain. But as of today, Barcelona are not contemplating the signing of Neymar. They are concentrating on getting a deal over the line for Robert Lewandowski. So of course, that makes sense. But in the comments, let me know, would you go 50 million euros for Neymar? For me, this is how I see it. If he was on 200k a week, I would go for it. Of course, 50 million euros for his talent is a steal. But he's on almost 700,000 euros per week at PSG. Ain't no way in hell he's cutting that down to more, by more than 80% to join Barcelona. I don't think that's the case. And all we're hearing right now from the power sources and name bar sources that he wants to stay at PSG. And of course, win that Champions League, the reason why he left Barcelona in the first place. Um, I think for 50, I would spend it on him, but of course his wages have to be 90% chopped off in my opinion. Ain't no way I'm paying 700k a week for Neymar, but 50 million for a transfer fee, the same price as Lewandowski. He's of course way younger and more talented in my opinion, so we'll wait and see on that. But there has been a forward that could come in to replace Lewandowski that was offered to Barcelona, but Barcelona have rejected that option, and that is the option of Paulo Dybala. Alfredo Martinez came out saying that Paulo Dybala offered himself to Barcelona as it was his dream to play at the Camp Nou, but Jordi Cruyff and Xavi ruled him out as an option for the club. So of course, Jordi Cruyff and Xavi have said no to Dybala after he was offered to Barcelona I believe it was probably you know, a month ago or so when he became a free agent from Juventus. I said at the time I'll probably you know sell Memphis and then bring Dybala as a replacement. Still think that can happen of course right now his move to Inter is being stalled but again he was offered to Barcelona and Barcelona rejected that opportunity. So overall the concrete alternatives right now for Lewandowski and Rafinha is pretty much Angel Di Maria and someone else. I'm very very scared that Morata could be coming in if we don't sign Lewandowski but of course Lewandowski's deal would depend on July the 12th what happens on that day and Rafinha of course is looking damn near impossible. Now along with the attack another party for Barcelona this summer will be to reinforce the defense more specifically in the full back positions of course at right back the priority is Aspen Aquetta, and at left back the priority is Marcus Alonso. Now Gerard Romero has come out saying an important week is coming up to find out the future of Marcus Alonso and Cesar Aspen Aquetta. The departure of Marina the CEO of Chelsea facilitated the departures of these players so again with Chelsea like I told you guys in yesterday's video big shakeup happening there of course Todd Bowley the owner is the only board director there at the moment he's handling everything new board ins outs blown returns he's handling everything and Marina has gone some old guy left as well I forget his name it's sort of the B or something but anyways big shakeup happening there and of course that them selling out their boardroom is their first priority, not selling Alonso and Aspinacuata. But apparently, Ramirez came out saying that Mariana has always been against selling Aspinacuata and Alonso on the cheap to Barcelona. So now, with the inexperienced board coming in, it could give Barcelona the advantage. Nonetheless, 
I think one of these two will be coming in, if not both. I think if Aspilicueta puts in that transfer request, he will make that deal possible. But of course, his Chelsea captain does not want to do that. I think Alonso is looking very good over Aspilicueta, but Xavi wants Aspilicueta more. So we'll wait and see. But again, these two Spanish players from Chelsea are one of the top targets for Barcelona this summer. Now, with a lot of Barcelona targets right now being very complicated to complete, the question has always been, will Barcelona do well in the Mercado? Of course, the transfer window. Now, Gerard de Miro came out saying the other day the board directors talked about not going crazy in the summer market now of course Jordan Vero came out a week ago saying we're gonna have a few a career more type of summer but now he's saying the board directors are more calm now of course this caused a lot of uproar in the Barcelona fan base saying look if we go into the season right now with the current squad that we have we are screwed beyond belief but Alfredo Martinez came out saying that Barcelona are convinced that they will be able to sign multiple players and have a competitive squad for next season not the best in the world World, but still very good and there will not be many squads that are considered better than our squad for next season but yes certainly one without Frankie de Jong now of course we'll talk about Frankie de Jong in a few seconds but Barcelona is still confident they will make a strong summer and have a strong squad going into next season again besides from Christensen and Kessie I'm expecting around five or six signings Lewandowski a right winger Aspilicueta Alonso a center back and then maybe Bernardo Silva if we sell Frankie de Jong so at the bare minimum I'm expecting five signings plus Kessie and Christensen, so seven signings this summer. I think that's a bare minimum for us to compete next season. Anything less, and I would be worried. Now, of course, the main question has always been, do Barcelona have money? Was La Liga's financial fair play rule? We're still stuck in the 1-3 rule? All that sort of stuff. Well, Javier Tevez spoke the other day about Barcelona's situation, and he came out saying that if Barcelona managed to activate the economic leverage they have already set out to do, they will be able to sign Lewandowski, Bernardo Silva, and some others as well. They are approved by the assembly and now they have to execute them, get the funds in they seem they can get with the TV rights and the sale of BLM. They know the exact numbers of the levers produced at capacity and there can be those signings and even some more. So again, Javier Tabez has switched his attitude since Juan Laporta called him out in the press and now he's saying, look, if Barcelona activate these economic levers, they will have no problems. They can sign Lewandowski, Bernardo, Conde, whoever they want in the transfer window. And of course, the deadline coming up for the acquisition of the levers for of course the TV rights is June the 30th. So one week yesterday is the deadline. So this Thursday coming up is the deadline to activate at least 10% of the sale of the TV rights to get out of the 1-3 rule. Now I'll say this, if we don't do it by then, the summer is screwed. But Barcelona, of course, are very, 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 very confident they will do so. Eduardo Romero confirmed the assembly. We have no doubts we will complete them before June the 30th. If you can tell by Barcelona over the past year and a half, they've done everything last second. So I'm still pretty confident, but we are reaching the deadline. If we don't activate it by then, our summer is absolutely screwed. But in due course, we will get the money in and have a strong summer. Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours first one of course the main one Frankie de Jong now Fernando Martinez who of course one of the best sources in Barcelona has come out saying that sources in Barcelona say that the club has decided to sell Frankie de Jong and there is no going back he will leave the club this summer this has made me worried in the sense that if Man United offer you know 10 million off what we want the club will accept it because they're desperate to sell him I don't think that should be the case I think if we get the right price right package sell him okay but don't be oh we're 10 million off ah screw it let's just take it because we really want to sell Frankie de Jong it's not that serious in my opinion but apparently Barcelona are very adamant to sell Frankie de Jong this summer and I've been telling you guys for the past week that Manchester United at some point this week will make a bid and today most likely is that day now Samuel Luckers from The Athletic who of course is very very reliable around Manchester United he came out saying that Manchester United are expected to formally submit an approved bid to Barcelona for Frankie de Jong in the imminent hours and Barcelona are believed to want 75 million euros plus add-ons for his deal I said incorrect Samuel we want 86 guaranteed plus add-ons I don't understand how Manchester United are just so clueless man like this is how, I you, you can tell their whole entire board is just business bank, man. They have not even a single football brain in that window. We've told you 86 million plus uh, add-ons for Frankie Dion. Oh, here's 60. Wait, it gets worse. So, of course, 
when, we, when they made that first verbal offer, it was Luis Rojo from Marca who broke the news. We all thought, ah, he's probably not right. But for, uh, Fabrizio Romano came out confirming it, saying that he got the numbers a bit wrong, but pretty much the, the structure of the deal was correct. And last night, Luis Rojo came out saying that Manchester United's new offer, Frankie De Jong, is 65 million euros plus 20 million euros in add-ons. The first offer was 60 plus 20 in add-ons. So you're telling me two freaking weeks of negotiation, your CEO coming out saying we have unlimited money, this and that, I'm working on the deal from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. In two weeks, you increase your offer by 5 million euros. I mean, what the, what, what, what am I dealing here with? I mean, oh my God, we want 86 million euros guaranteed. You know what guaranteed means? Oh, here's 86 in a package of 60 plus 20. Garbage out of my face. I want an eight after the euro or pound symbol, whatever you want to do, whatever currency you want to pass in. I want an eight as the first digit. Get the six out of my face. And now with the Alfredo Martinez report, I am kind of worried that Barcelona not will not accept this offer, of course, but could accept something a bit higher, maybe 75 plus 20, maybe 70 plus 20. I am worried about that. But 65 plus 20, what have you been doing for two weeks? Oh, thank God, I'm not a Manchester United fan. Oh my God, and keep in mind, today as well, their owners are taking 11 million euros out of the club. Thank God I'm not them. Now, I see some of their fans came out saying that, oh, you're trying to underpay for Lewandowski, so don't, you guys are signing kind of hypocrites and not giving us a uh, perfect deal for Frankie De Jong. First of all, sit in your spot. Second of all, Lewandowski wants to come to us. Frankie De Jong does not want to come to you, as uh, Mundo Portivo has said, I'll come to that in a few seconds. Also, we have set a fair price for Frankie De Jong. Bayern Munich are giving us some outrageous offer of 50 million euros for a player who has one year left in its contract. Frankie de Jong has four years left in his contract, so sit your lane. Now, Mundo Portivo came out saying, despite all rumors, Manchester United have not yet addressed Barcelona with a real proposal for Frankie de Jong because they haven't even managed to convince the player who still has serious doubts. They can't even convince Frankie de Jong to join them, and they're giving us some absolutely disgustingly shite bids. 60 you went from 60 to 65 in two weeks how embarrassing is that because apparently Manchester United want to play the long game David Ornstein without a doubt top two journalists in the world of football has come out saying that sources say that Frankie de Jong to Manchester United is likely to happen by the end of this window however it is expected to be a long transfer saga this summer due to the fee that Barcelona are demanding I'm going to tell you guys what Manchester United's plan is they're gonna drag this out until August. August 1st hits. Hey, so what are 65 million euros plus 20? We're gonna say no, 86. They're gonna come August 15th. Hey, 65 plus 20? No, 86 guaranteed. Then they'll probably offer 86 uh, million euros plus five guaranteed or 10, some of that are non guaranteed and add ons or whatever. Then we'll accept it. But here's the best part. Barcelona is in control of the situation. We want Bernardo Silva. And of course, City are not gonna sell one of their best players once the Premier League season starts. So. And they don't make us an offer by August, I would say that's decent. This deal will not happen. And I still think by June the 30th, if this deal does not happen, I can't see it happening either. Of course, a lot of coolers want to swap for Frankie for Bernardo. I'm okay with that as well. But here's the best part. I'm also okay with keeping Frankie. So we'll wait and see. I think Manchester United are playing a very dangerous game. They've not signed anyone. Their fans are an uproar. Thank God I'm not them, but they're... Their board directors are being embarrassed. How do you have a leaked video come out saying that we have unlimited money, the coach and the sporting director will get the money they want, the money is there. Yet it took you two weeks to increase your offer from 60 plus 20 to 65 plus 20. A wait and see. I think this will be a long uh, saga, of course. I do agree with David Ornstein here, but I think in the end, past June the 30th, Barcelona will be in full control of the situation. Now, there's no doubt that Barcelona will not struggle to sell Frankie de Jong this summer. They want the exact price for him or else they'll be happy to keep him. But there are so many other players in the squad who Barcelona are desperate. And I mean desperate in the sense they will do anything to get rid of them this summer. Samuel Marsden and Moses Malone from ESPN have come out saying that Barcelona are working on the departures of several players who are not in Chavez's plans, but there are concern at the club that nobody wants to leave. I think, you know, Ricky Pochman Gates will, will leave. I have no worries about them. I'm worried about your Titi, your Longlet, your Pianiches, your Braithwaite. Those four, maybe even Neto, I would say. Those five for me, 
are making my blood boil. I think Longlet will leave in the end on loan. I think Tottenham want him. Apparently, Antonio Conte loves him. I'm giving the Tottenham for free. Honestly, I was saying, you know what? Just take him. I think on Titi, we'll talk about Titi right now, actually. Where is it? Uh, right here. Uh, Sport have come out saying that Samuel Titi knows that Barcelona don't count on him. He's willing to leave, but he prefers to move to a club that plays in the European competition, preferably in the Champions League. For the moment, he rejects all offers from mid-table clubs. So we're still, we still have the same time on Titi from last summer. Oh, I'll leave if the Champions League club comes in. No f***ing Champions League club wants you. You're sh You're absolutely sh Played one game in the past season. One 90 minute game. What, what, what Champions League club will be out of their mind to get you, mate? Open your head. Go play somewhere for a year. Prove you're a Champions League center back. And then maybe the next summer after that, they'll come in for you. I mean, my fucking God. I, I'm, I've had it up to here with Samuel Omtiti. I'm a, I'm, I'm thinking about taking a trip to Spain in August. And if I get, if I, if I'm in Spain in August, these these players are not safe. Trust me, they're not safe. And the same goes for Merlin Pjanic. Again, for Mr. Mano came out saying there are currently no talks between Barcelona and Marseille for Merlin Pjanic. He is not a target for Marseille at the moment. I'm on the same boat as Longlet and Pianch. I think both these two players in the end will leave on loan once the preseason starts. They don't get to play any games whatsoever. And then they'll be like, oh my god, we really gotta leave. And then then they will leave. I think Pianch is an ambitious player. He's a good professional, but he just wants every single euro in that contract, which understandable. I don't blame him. I think in the end he will leave alongside Longlet. But again, the main problem will be Samuel Omtiti, maybe even Neto. Apparently Neto and Barcelona have some sort of agreement that he will leave the club this summer in some way, shape, or form. Termination of contract, letter of freedom, loan, sale, whatever it may be. But with him sitting sat on 120k per week, it will make it difficult because he wants every single euro in his contract as well. <sighs> we want to bring in seven players. We've already signed two. That means seven players have to leave the squad. I'm, I'm, the only people who I think a thousand percent will leave is, of course, Luke and Adama with their loans being canceled. Danny Alves running out of contract as well. Those three are guaranteed. I think Frankie De Jong is gone. I think Mingueta is gone. I think Ricky Poch. That's six. There's still about another five. I think Trincao will go out on loan. That's seven. Griezmann will stay if you really want to count that. So we still got five more slots to deal with here. It will be difficult. I think in the end, the club will work their magic, of course, from that budget. Hopefully, they use some of that money to terminate some of their contracts. I'm thinking Braithwaite, terminate him. I'm thinking Om to terminate. I think Pianch and Longlet, you can survive with you know, another season long loan. So, we'll wait and see. But again, like the report says, the club are very concerned about players not wanting to leave the club this summer. And again, it will be difficult to get rid of them. So, we'll have to wait and see. But there is some players that Barcelona don't want to get rid of this summer. And one of them at the moment is... The winger from Barcelona B, Abdi. Now, Mundo Portivo came out saying that according to the local media in Spain near Osasuna, they want to sign Abdi on loan. But Xavi likes him a lot. He will do preseason with the first team, following which a decision will be made. Many Spanish clubs and foreign clubs are interested. And you know what? I'm putting Collado on the same boat. Both these two wingers, a thousand percent, will be doing preseason with Barcelona. If they impress, they could stay, maybe stay in Barcelona B, but in the first team dynamics. Hell, maybe even get promoted to the first team or go out on loan, be sold with a buyback option. Again, from now until preseason, I wouldn't, you know, disregard the rumors about Abdi and Koyada because 100% they will do preseason with the first team and then their futures will be decided afterwards. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Firstly, on the contract renewal of Pablo Gave. It's coming in from goal and they've come out saying that Barcelona want to close Gave's contract renewal at some point next week before at least he returns for preseason training. So pretty much July the 4th is the deadline to renew Gavis' contract and in the end there are no problems he will renew apparently according to reports in the media as well the two main concerns are the length of contract will it be 2026 or 2027 and secondly you guessed it the salary of the player as well so I'm not gonna dwell on it I've already given my comments over the past few videos if you want to go check those out go check those out in the end Gavi will renew the question right now is when will he put pen and paper on a new contract the next contract renewal update is on the contract renewal of your main boy Usman Dembele. Pretty much quick update from yesterday's video essentially. If you want the more in-depth details, go check that out. I'll go through this quickly then give you guys my opinion. First coming in from Catalonia Radio, they've come out saying that Usman Dembele has talked with Xavi. He told him that he does not want to sign with anyone and wants to continue at Barcelona but does not accept Barcelona's current offer. The Frenchman will make a decision when he returns 
from his vacation. Fernando Polo from Deportivo came out saying the offer which Barcelona made to Usman Dembele is still valid. Usman Dembele says that he wants to continue but has no intentions of lowering his demands. But Barcelona are clear that if he wants to stay at the club this summer, he will have to accept the current offer on the table. Helena Codes from Cope came out saying that Usman Dembele maintains his desire to stay at Barcelona but as of now he does not intend to accept the current offer that he considers insufficient. Barcelona have told him to either take the offer or leave. I'm loving this man. We're just staying so damn firm of Usman Dembele. By the way, our last contract offer is the best offer we can make to him. He's pretty much earning the same amount that he's earning right now, 250,000 euros per week, if he plays, gets goals, gets assists, all based on variables and stuff like that. But in the end, he could reach that money. Some people are saying he actually earns more money if he reaches those variables, you know, assists, goals, all that sort of stuff. So very, very happy that Barcelona are staying firm on Usman Dembele. And finally, AS, of course, coming in from having Miguel. And he came out saying that Dembele Dembele asked Chabi to mediate with him. The coach's reply was very simple. Usman, you have received the club's offer since December. Either you accept it or there is nothing that we can do. As I told you, the club will not make you a new offer. Even Chabi's in on it. Just love to see it, man. We'll see. I think if, if any other club in the world, Chelsea, United, PSG, Bayern, Juventus, whoever it may be, make an offer that's even a bit more than Barcelona, Dembele is off. But if no one makes that offer or they offer equal to Barcelona, he'll stay. Again, when he comes back from vacation, he will make that decision. So we'll wait and see. Again, I'd say 90% he's going to leave, 10% he will stay. And my 10% is on the fact that no other club will offer him anything. Once you hear reports saying that, oh, Chelsea have offered Dembele the kind that he wants, finito. Absolutely finito. So we'll wait and see. But again, Dembele is asking the club to increase their offer. He does not want to accept the current offer on the table. But Barcelona have said, screw you, take the offer on the table or hit the high road. And the final contract renewal update is on the contract renewal of Jordi Cruyff. That's right. Not only players, we also renew the contracts of our board members. Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying the contract renewal of Jordi Cruyff is very advanced but not closed yet. Although some fringes are still missing, he will extend his stay for at least one more year and Barcelona's plan is to announce it after announcing the renewal of Gavi due to image issues. So it would look very weird for Barcelona to renew a board member's contract before you know Gavi or Dembele. So what they're gonna do, figure out Gavi, renew it, announce it, present it, and then afterwards they will announce and present the renewal of Jordi Cruyff. Because of course, it will look very, very bad on Barcelona if we renew a board member before a key player in the squad. So again, similar to Gavi, there is no doubt that Jordi Cruyff will renew his contract at Barcelona and also receive a promotion. Now the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is reveal to you guys and also analyze Barcelona's La Liga schedule for the upcoming 2022-2023 season. A lot of key points. Firstly, of course, there will be that gap between November and December for the World Cup. Secondly, first match against Rayo Vallecano at home. But the second and third and fourth and fifth match, the first five matches for Barcelona, are very, very difficult. Real Sociedad away at the Anahueta, Real Valladolid at home, Sevilla at the Ramon Sanchez Piz 1, Cadez, who we've never beaten yet in La Liga. Very, very, very difficult first five games for Barcelona. Secondly, the Clasico, of course, the first two games, first one will be, I think, in October. Second one will be in March. The second one is at the Camp Nou. Fun of freaking Lee. I swear the last 10 years, they've always been the second match at the Santiago Bernabeu, but this year, it will be at the Camp Nou. Thirdly, if you look at the schedule, all of the difficult matches for Barcelona, we're talking Sevilla, Villarreal, Atletico, Real, all the tough games you can think of, they're all away first. We play every single match away from home first, all the difficult ones. You can even look at the schedule. Real Madrid away first, Sevilla away first, Sociedad away first, Valencia away first. All the difficult games, we play away first. This is so this is so important because we have to start of the season off perfectly and on the right track. This is why we have to do all of our signings as soon as possible. Once August the 12th or 14th, sorry, 14th hits, the squad has to be ready to go and we need to push. I think if Barcelona is on top before the World Cup break in La Liga, we will be on track to win the league. I think whoever's in first place going into the World Cup will have the big advantage of winning this league. So the first you know, few months of this league is going to be very, very decisive and very, very important. Again, all of Barcelona's difficult matches in the league against all the top teams are away from home first, which of course 
makes it very difficult. So we'll wait and see. Overall, La Liga schedule will be very, very tough for Barcelona, of course, all the way matches being first. Ray Vaikana at home first shouldn't be a problem. But in the end, we now know the schedule for Barcelona to become Spanish champions again. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course, leave your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing on our firstly, about the Lewandowski saga, are you still confident that we will sign him in the end or not? And do you think July the 12th is a very decisive day like I believe? Secondly, on Rafinha, what would you do? Make a you know crappy offer, hope for the best, walk away. Thirdly, on those alternatives, you know, Neymar, Suarez, Dybala, Angel Di Maria, who would you sign if we don't get Rafinha and Lewandowski? Fourthly, on the exit, of course, of Frankie De Jong. What the bloody hell would you do with Manchester United? Would you just ignore them, say, you know what, screw you, rather keep Frankie De Jong than deal with you, or would you play the long game alongside Manchester United? And finally, on the renewal of Usman Dembele, do you think they'll end up renewing and stay at Barcelona, or will they receive a better offer somewhere and leave the club as a free agent? And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care, and Forza Barca. Forza Barca!